Heinz has unveiled a new hybrid condiment. You ready for this? Cranch is a mix of, yeah, you guessed it, ketchup and ranch. It's just the latest creation, uh, concoction of dual condiments. And you know, guys, we've seen this before. You remember this? Last year, Heinz released mayo chup, <laughs> ketchup and mayo, mm. and mayo q, mayo and barbecue, uh, and mayo must, <laughs> may mayo and mustard. Are you making these up? No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I don't joke about, um, concoctions from, right. from Heinz. I don't think they should ever get you to be their spokesperson, though, <laughs> just based on the way you say them. You say Ma them angrily. Mayo must. <laughs> Mayo must. Mayo and mustard. Uh, Mayo must just hit shelves last month, by the way. The company teased their latest concoction here, posting a blurred out picture of the new sauce uh, that, to hype up the public. Cranch will be available in the U.S. later this month, hopefully in Canada at some point. Would you? Mm. I'm really? having trouble, only because I love the mayo and ketchup. Mayo Ma chup is a, mayo is a thing. But, mayo but mayo has a certain uh, consistency, whereas ranch is different. I just Similar I, consistency. No, it's like a little bit more watery. And, and it depends on which mayo, right? Because yeah. there's like, it depends, yeah, like it, there's a certain tang and the mm. consistency has a lot to do with it. And then the tang with the ranch is a whole other flavor. Yeah. I, I, I can't I'm down with, I'm surprised, like think about it, if you guys have a nice burger, like, you put ranch and you'd put ketchup no. on a burger, right? No. That doesn't happen. You wouldn't? Oh, no. man, ranch goes no, with almost everything. Thing. But no. on the burger? Yeah, of course. No. Huh. Like, you've never, like, dipped your chicken tenders into ranch or whatever? Not what? my thing. Mayo and chicken is a good time. Mm. Mayo chup and chicken. I'm down with, I'm down with mayo chup. I'm down with <laughs> cranch. Cranch is a winner to me. Would you like, say cranch? Does that roll off the tongue? It rolls off the tongue better than mayo must. Yes, <laughs> mayo must is... Unique. Yeah, like I, I think, um, you know, Chris Fisher, our producer, said when I said I'm down with Cranch off camera, he's like, uh, would you dip it, would you use it for your vegetables or would you use it for fries? It's like fries. Yeah, you can't dip um, a carrot in that. No, we wouldn't no. dip a carrot in it. Ooh. No. Can I put celery? The, mm. Not with ketchup. No, not with the ketchup I don't portion. like it. I don't the like ranch. it. ranch. Can I pose this to you? This was posed on, I'm stealing this from This Is Us, a recent episode. <laughs> Um, Miguel said that they played a game while they were waiting in the waiting room and they were like, uh, try and name a food that isn't better with either chocolate or ranch. It's tough. Yeah, oh. it is really tough. Can you name a food that isn't better with either chocolate or ranch? No. Because all fruit, all fruit, sushi, Sue says. Oh. Ranch. Yeah, you could probably do it with ranch. Probably do it with ranch. Yeah, anyway, they played the game and they had trouble. I, don't, I think that they couldn't come up with anything. Because all fruit is better with chocolate. Yeah. So do that. Ish. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, this we'll have to wait and try it to be able to see. Yeah. How would how would you say these? Bye, Lisa. Bye, Bye Lisa. Bye. Yeah. How, how would you say? Uh, how would you say? Mayo chup. And and this one? Mayo must. That's what I said. Yeah. Ma mayo chup and mayo must. Yeah, but you say so, it with anger. No, no. I think that's that me happy. You last time tried to change this around. Do you like the way cranch sounds? You would you like to go with a, a ranch up? <laughs> <laughs> ranch up? No. <laughs> <laughs> ranch up, ranch up, for the, ranch up for the win. Uh, Heinz and Cadbury, we talked a little bit about this earlier. They've collaborated to bring two completely opposite ingredients together in one condiment. Right. You're not sure. I think it's an awesome idea. Uh, cream eggs and mayonnaise. Some thought mm. that Heinz uh, and the good Cadbury cream egg mayo was an April Fool's joke, but turns out it's real. Okay. If you're in London, England during Easter weekend, you can try a free sample, but only while supply supplies last. If somehow someone actually likes the spread, unfortunately it isn't available to take home. Okay. I kind of hope that, that this is a runaway success because obviously I, I can't afford to hop across the pond to try this out for Easter, it's coming quickly. I really, 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 really want to try it. So Heinz, CP24 breakfast. Hook us up. Hook us up. Send us some of these. Listen, you know, you know me, Bill. I subscribe yep. to the school of thought. Don't knock anything until you tried it. So I would happily try this once before I uh, pass judgment. But just the sound of it, give me this again, mayo mm -hmm. and Cadbury cream. Just saying it makes me feel like a curdling sensation in my stomach. But maybe they'll, they'll go well together and I'll try it. Yesterday we talked about Cranch, also from uh, Heinz Craft and, and uh, sorry, Ketchup and Ranch. Yeah. That sounds good to me with a little chicken, like some, some chicken nugs or some chicken tenders, but this one doesn't sound good on this one. Well, I love ketchup and mayo together. I know that that isn't the sweetness of it. And then I start thinking about cheesecake and cheesecake kind of has a creamy sweetness to it. And I'm like, why can't we make that one extra leap? I do love cheesecake. Yeah. yeah okay, you're starting to, okay. starting to convince me a little bit. Cadbury, you know where we are. You know internet challenges, right? These yeah. things come up now, feels like once a week, right? Mm. Yes. We've got a new one for you. It's probably the most annoying one I've seen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's 
really good. That is kind of annoying. That is actually pretty interesting. It's hard to look away, it's annoying, yeah. it's a lot of things. Okay, so this is how it all started, guys. Uh, Twitter user P underscore Gibbs shared a video of herself impressively mimicking a car alarm. This was in late March, so just uh, last week, really. And now others are seeing if they can uh, share her quote-unquote secret talent. <laughs> the hashtag car alarm challenge has people uploading videos of themselves shrieking and wailing like car alarms while hitting themselves in the throat and apologies for what's about to happen on this couch. <laughs> Are we trying this? I mean, I feel this like... This is ridiculous. Well, I feel Before like... we do, I have a little story oh. for this. Okay. Uh, Come on. And I kind of hope it morphs into this. Uh, so every, every morning when I'm out on the weather patio, uh, Ken Enlow, our camera guy, who maybe or may not be listening, who's with Jamie out there right now, I, I believe he times it. So I'm about to do my weather and he backs up and goes, beep, beep, <laughs> yeah. beep, beep, beep. <laughs> So I look down at him and he just laughs. Yeah. So occasionally when he's kind of walking by the garage door bay, yeah. I go, beep, beep. He goes like, what? Because he yeah. thinks someone's backing into him. So that's my little story. There's also always okay. a GFL truck out there whenever you're oh, doing your yeah. weather as well, I, but right? I, yeah. yeah the that truck. imitating a <laughs> yeah. 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 Sounds like that's robots dying harder. in our parking lot. And then lot. you try to listen to directions <laughs> in your ear. You're yeah, like, why well, you say Sue? Yeah. Sue's our director downstairs. Like, Tell them what's Sue. happening. Yeah. Quick funny story. My first ever hit here, which was 10 years ago, 2009, I was doing weather. Yeah. I went up to the patio and there's a fire truck rolling by and I didn't increase the volume of my voice because I figured I could hear it but this probably doesn't translate on TV. And I came back down, I was super nervous. It was my first hit for CP24 and the boss at that time, I, I walked into his office and I go, how'd I do? And he goes, great, except I couldn't hear a thing you said. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> oops, I didn't realize that that translates look where so you well. Are now, though. That's look probably where you are for now. the best, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you trying this challenge? Is anybody doing it? Yeah, we, we go gotta, for we, it. so we got to do this. Okay. We, none of us have tried this yet, correct? No, no. I just read about it. I, okay. watch you guys I nominate you. you. Why? I don't know, because you're very talented. <laughs> Can we see it one more time? Can we see it one more time to see how this actually happens? Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to go around the horn here, literally. I can't. <laughs> See, I don't have that octave. Uh, well, Mika, give it a go. You. Give it a go. We're, every, everyone's got to try. Brandon? No. Okay, I'm going first? Yeah. Okay. Go. Ah! Oh. Sorry, I have a little bit of mucus still left That's in my throat. That's a weak <laughs> car alarm. Mika. Okay, Mika, you got the I high can't. red here. No, I don't. Ah! You're not well, even hitting yourself. I don't want to hurt my neck. Come All right. on. Dude, do I really have to take yes, your hands here? Yeah. All right, let's try it. I feel it. like you're going to nail it. That's pretty good. Wait, we have a winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is for the show. We have a winner. I can't follow yeah, that. Come on. Oh, yeah, you got, you got a tracker, dude. Go. Oh, I like that, too. Wow. Yeah. High five on the car. Your alarm actually is not that annoying. This side no. of the couch? Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Congrats, got, you two. Like, the nicer, okay. like, high-end alarm. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> wow, what's mine? A lot of? Mika. Mika is throwing shit. Oh, what, what, what's going on? A little shit. That's literally your car. Someone's yeah. breaking into Someone your car. Oh, is. That's the real thing. Oh, and there's the GFL. The GFL it's truck. It's all right. coming together. I swear they're listening to us on iHeartRadio, and they're just waiting <sighs> for their cue to, like, roll by us. So, okay. You know. Well, there's always a uh, small feeling of dread when you have a flight and you know you're stuck with the middle seat. The middle seat is the worst. Uh, now one company is offering a new product that may make the middle seat a whole lot more popular. The airline seat manufacturer has a new design that makes the middle seat the biggest in the row of three. Only seems fair. The innovative design has the aisle <clears throat> seat slide over the middle one. Okay. This makes the aisle wider and helps speed up the boarding process. Uh, because of this, the middle seat gets a wider cushion. Um, one airline has reportedly already placed an order. Sorry, I was reading this script. I gotta get a look at this here. Okay, so. so it actually slides over on top while people board and oh, then it slides back out. Yes. I so just look at that. Boarding. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. for, okay. So getting in and out, or I guess getting in is, is much faster. Yeah. Huh. And out. And, and you get more room. I mean, really, that's the bottom line here. The, their point is, is that even though they made it bigger, it's not going to impact when you're embarking or right. disembarking because they have a way of moving it out of the way. But the seat is actually bigger. That's the whole point, is that you will get a bigger seat. So maybe somebody's going to actually be like, I get the middle seat for once. <laughs> Which nobody be, said it, ever. It won't nobody be me. <laughs> Three but inches. if if you are a, a, a taller or a bigger person, that might actually make a big, big difference. Because I had friends who Absolutely. were like 6'4", 220, and they were extremely uncomfortable. I, the leg room also has a lot to do with that. Um, but that would probably make a difference. I don't, I don't like the middle, unless I'm traveling with someone I know very well. 
and then I want to sit next to them. Yeah. I'd I get never stuck beside some person that's just mm -hmm. way too familiar and comfy, and they're going to slide that seat back in. They want to get close and have a nice, you know, close talk, close yeah. talking conversation with me, and it's like, uh, no. Yeah, and it also depends on how long the flight is, too, right? Because I'd be willing to do this for a shorter flight, you know, three hours or less. Yeah. Anything more than that, I still don't want the middle seat. No. no. I, uh, I still wouldn't take the middle. It's three extra inches. I still, I'm still an aisle guy. Aisle's great. You don't really? have to bug yeah. me. What? Yeah, I take aisle over the window because that mm. way I, I like getting up and stretching my legs, especially mm. in longer flights. I'll actually go into the area, you know, behind the curtain. I'll just kind of politely say, hey, do you mind if I just stretch here on a longer flight? And they've always been fine with it. Do some lunges, get some stress, some hip openers. Just do you do those leg exercises that you do here, there? Uh, Are you sure they're fine there, with that? If there's room. Yeah, well, it's what so, I do behind the anchor desk. Yeah, I do legs and all that. Then they pull the curtain, and then you're leading a, an yeah. exercise class. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I'm not doing it on a one-hour flight to New York, <laughs> but you do it on one of the longer flights. You I, like window, right? I like because you see the clouds. It's like the best yeah. view you're gonna get. I'm a window guy ever. Too. Like, and when yeah, but you what about sleep? when you got to pee and everyone, the two people are sleeping guy, beside you? You know what? But then, but I get maybe it's because I'm wider this way. I get bumped by the uh, flight attendants yeah. or just people coming by with their luggage and stuff so often. It's like just in the middle of a hot coffee. So you're like Drew Barrymore, wedding singer. She always gets hit. Anybody I'll take the uh, window. I can that, uh, when Bill sits beside his friends, he knows their height and weight. You know, 6'4", 220. <laughs> Well, a polarizing opinion on Reddit has caused quite the stir. Check it out. A Reddit user shared a post about cereal and how it should be eaten with water instead of milk. Yeah. Come on. Uh, the person who wrote the post is a true believer of cereal with water, saying the taste of milk <laughs> conflicts with the taste of the cereal. Responses included... You disgust me <laughs> and pick a different breakfast food. Yeah. So far, the post has generated more than 5,000 comments. And this is what we love on this show, these debatables, the things that get people talking or disgusted oh. or inclined to weigh in. You're deep. Uh, Somewhere Jerry Seinfeld is perking up. He would not accept this, right? Jerry nope. loves his cereal. He loves his cereal. As Helen Pooja during our uh, chat time here, before pre-chat chat, mm. I have uh, all kinds of experience with this. Right now, uh, my aunt's, my, my, my wife's aunt is visiting from Greece. She's staying with us. And she does bran buds every morning for breakfast, very routine, and does it with milk, most, or uh, water, most days. Huh. Which I so find, she does cereal with water. Yeah, which I find really strange. And my personal experience just with liquid and cereal, first time I went to Greece as a child, five years old, and this was the village back in the day. They, they didn't have really good refrigeration either. They, and breakfast in Greece is like, you know, a biscuit and some coffee, even for the kids, right? It's not a big meal. But they got me cereal because I knew I was crazy about sugary cereals. But they don't have cows in Greece in the village. It's goats. So they put the warm right out of the, let's give them fresh milk. Oh, my god. Fresh goodness. goat milk oh. on my cornflakes. Oh, no. Oh. I lost my marbles. <laughs> right? A lot, I had a full-on tantrum. They ended up getting me, they, they couldn't get, like, the kind of milk I wanted even at the store in yeah. town, the one store in the village. Chocolate milk, they got me. Okay. So oh that was fine. Gosh, wow. So I was spoiled. I went from Goat pain milk. and suffering to... Oh that's like gosh. going from the, uh, what's it, like from the whatever to the penthouse, the yeah. uh, the outhouse to the penthouse, Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. So it was good. It, wow. Good story, good ending. Look, I, you know, I will say, I looked at those visuals. It did not disgust me. I thought it would, but really? I looked at that water and I thought, you know, isn't it really, doesn't it just come down to what we are used to? Because yeah. if you think about it, people who use almond milk, for instance, uh. right, most of that is water. Right? It has a little bit of a color, True. right? So it makes you think that it's more milk like. But in actuality, what you're tasting, it's really, it's not, it doesn't add that much of a difference. Obviously, milk does, but I'm just saying there are other alternatives to milk that people use. Yeah. So why can't it just be water? I, I, is almond milk mostly water? I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, not, it's oh. not a whole lot of almonds oh, in there. I didn't know it's that. not okay. juice. Yeah, I, drink, I drink almond milk. Yeah. Soy yeah. juice, I, not soy milk. I was not privy to the pre chat chat because I'm doing the news. So yes. I'm just over here for the regular chat, the TV <laughs> chat. Um, listen, you guys know me. I'm, I'm generally a proponent of don't knock it till you tried it. Yeah. I feel like I am coming into this one with some preconceived notions of how this is going to be. Uh, I, I love milk and cereal, and then the way the, the cereal, uh, sorry, the milk, when you're done the cereal, the milk mm. like soaks in the flavor yep. of the cereal, and yep. you drink that milk. Sweet I don't milk. know if water would do the same thing. Let's get to this story. I really want to get you guys to weigh in on this one. Um, <laughs> some, some couples are turning to sleeping in separate beds to get a better night's rest. I feel like this one might really apply to this couch. <laughs> uh, it's called a sleep divorce. I know, dramatic. And according to Psychology Today, 30% of Americans would rather sleep separately from their other half. Different sleeping schedules, i.e. this couch, uh, a partner being easily disrupted or snoring can all cause sleep incompatibility. Lack of sleep can be bad for a relationship, lowering levels of gratitude for a partner, leading to people 
being more selfish potentially. Psychology Today recommends trying a sleep divorce a few nights a week to see if it works for you. If not, consult your doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what? In the early, I think, 50s and everything, even when you're watching the shows like um, I Love Lucy and all that stuff, they weren't sleeping together in the same bed yeah, before. Like they had beds. separate beds and, like, you know what I mean? Same room, but like it was like two single beds or whatever right. they were. Trailblazers. Right? So yeah. Maybe they were exactly, they had something going on over there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I know I have a huge bed. I have a king size bed. And um, Claudio does come to sleep later sometimes than I do. So it's like, and I have this little memory foam, so this gel thing, so it doesn't move. The bed so right. much. So is that the okay. one you can oh. drop the bowling ball on one side? Exactly, and you're like, oh, exactly. So yeah, we have that. So that's right a now. way around it. Yeah. So you don't, exactly. it doesn't bug you when he rolls into bed late? Um, sometimes. I mean, it depends on the night. It depends. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Those were actually TV regulations back in the fifties. Oh. They couldn't have people sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> the Dick I'm Van sure Dyke rule. To. Is that I, right? I, yes. The Dick Van Dyke rule. Uh, oh. We just weren't ready to see that on TV. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm okay with this kind of uncon unconscious uncoupling. Uh, but only during the work days. I'm, I'm a, a cuddle monster, and uh, I think if I had a partner who didn't want to sleep at least two nights a week uh -huh. in the same bed, I think that would be a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. did, you say, say, did you say cuddle monster or cookie monster? Both. Cuddle okay. and I, but I don't, eat, I don't eat cookies in bed because I realize that's also a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> As well, he's learned. Thanks George, for George. Thanks for what about you guys? Okay, I will say this. Sleep, obviously, so important to yeah. everything, right? So you understand. I can understand the logic and whatnot. But part of the benefits, and there are many, we can get into what those may or may not be, about actually sleeping with a partner. One of those benefits is that if in the middle of the night I stop breathing, I want to know that there is somebody there who will oh, be yeah. able to, there's you that. know. But they'll like, be sleeping. What are they going to well, do? Well, when my alarm goes off and, you know, and I don't react, then there's somebody that I like, go, oh, are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? And call 911. I, you know, if I'm by Is myself, here? I'm just really? saying oh. that I, it's important <laughs> for your well-being too, for health reasons yeah. alone. What about all the time you were like before you married, like just? I could have died, man. <laughs> I could have died. That's why I got Alone. <laughs> this is what you're worried about. This is what keeps Pooch I'm up I'm just night. saying there are lots of benefits. That's just one of them. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I, I, you know, I would, I would do what works for me. Like sleeping in the same bed still works. Yeah. I don't yeah. hear him. I'm Cause out Paul, cold. Because Paul's a lawyer, right? Sometimes he has to be out later. Oh, You're in bed early. Like it there doesn't are times you. where my alarm goes off at three eleven, and he's coming home. Right. And we just, oh, you know, man. well, that's okay. We had that five. doesn't, yeah, yeah, that doesn't disrupt you then, because he has to come home really late. Yeah. <laughs> just not like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, my world, it's if I super snore, I'm out the door. Oh, and Mary true. typically oh. falls asleep before me, and she's a light enough sleeper. But it, but there are, I'm in this stage of life now. Where, and I wouldn't know it because I'm sleeping. Uh -huh. But I will rattle off like a crazy snore. <laughs> and if it's if she needs her sleep and I'm only going to be getting a couple hours yeah. anyways, I'll go. And if oh, you toot, man. you get the boot. That's for the other. Oh. Oh. Right, to get Anyone the boot. else a snorer on this couch? Fess up. I don't know. We don't know. Your partner's never told. If your partner, yeah. no. I, only in the last couple of years for me. So if yeah. they haven't said anything, you're probably not. I think we've learned a lot about Bill here today. Yeah. You too. Cuddle, cuddle monster. Then, no, no, then no, you get those are my rules. No yeah. cookies in bed, no, and no, he's a cuddle monster. And he's a toot monster. <laughs> cookies in bed make um, me sleep. <laughs> thanks, for, th a, thanks for asking. Yeah. I sleep with Toppy seven nights a week. Yeah, the she, dog helps. She tells me I don't oh, snore, yeah. uh, and uh, we cuddle, and it's amazing. And um, the weekends are the best because I can linger in bed and just hang on there. Weekdays, I'm like, I gotta go. And she's like, where are you going? I'm like, I gotta go. And then you have a whole back and forth. Yeah, and then we high five. Yeah. And then she goes, oh, thank Thank goodness Gurdip is still breathing. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are the best in bed to cuddle. Yeah. yeah, this is important. So we actually brought you this story before, but it's a bit of an update. So it's a corsage that your prom date will never forget. With graduation season coming up, this year's hottest accessory is flaky, buttery, and beautiful. It's the croissant corsage, which <laughs> Tough to is say. not easy to say. It's from Cheddar Scratch Kitchen. It's available now for lucky customers located only in Dallas, but it was inspired by a texting mistake. So you remember this story? The teens found themselves asking their prom dates what croissant they wanted instead of texting croissant. That was probably an autocorrect. When you're on the phone, it Probably. Yeah. Uh, it blew up on social media, and then the surprisingly elegant corsage was born. Uh, okay. It uses croissants, baby's breath flowers, and roses. So do you just, like, is this like the late night snacks after <laughs> after the prom? You just, you don't have time to go to, like, pizza pizza? You just start munching your wrist? Yeah. It's like, it's like listen, you look beautiful tonight, uh, but that looks delicious uh -huh. on your arm. I, I need that. I mean, listen, this in some realms, this might qualify as foreplay. 
Right? It could Just be. Just a little nibbling, a little, little nibbling on the wrist? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Paul. I mean, I'm sure that, well, I'm sure that, you know, mom and dad wouldn't like that part, but hey, it's... I mean, it's less offensive than, than other things that could happen after prom. True. Right? Uh, you know, and, and lots of questions here, because if you have a good croissant, right, it's mm -hmm. flaky. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So yeah. that you're getting all you're getting over your crumbs. dress. Yeah, you're getting crumbs everywhere. Uh, do you go sweet? Do you go savory? Right? Because if you do like the chocolate inside. I'd say a little chocolate and cheese. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Together? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Sweet and okay. savory. Yeah. And if you've ever been bite into a stale one, which I don't know what goes in, because there's glue involved if you're putting in baby's breath flowers and stuff like that. So I'm not really sure this is edible. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, or what, you. What are the guys getting for a boutonniere then? Like bacon? Like bacon see? boutonniere? It's so funny you say that because I can read your mind. It's only when we're when we can actually see I'd each I, other. Yeah. yeah. I can read your mind and I know what you would have preferred, which in 2014 this came out from KFC and it was a thing. <laughs> the fried chicken boutonniere? Yes. I'm down. There you go. Hug your brother or text your sister because it is National Siblings Day. Whether you get along like angels or fight like cats and dogs, siblings. Usually the people you've known the longest, other than your parents. Uh, relationships, of course, change over the years. They're always evolving, but the bonds, they stay the same, friends. Uh, the best way to celebrate is to spend time together. But if you can't do that, um, I guess the modern, modern way to show someone you care is post a picture of your sibling on social media and tag them in it, get them some likes, and maybe even some new followers. I feel like you gotta read that again, and we've gotta get, uh, I'll ask the audio right now if they can come up with some music. You know, like that, like from a, a sitcom, when they, they oh. played like the, the really sort of The opening cheesy, music? You no, know, yeah, the cheesy that, music when there's like a Oh, lesson. like the full house music yes, at the end, the yes. Denny Tanner uh, teaching yeah. Stephanie a lesson? Yeah, let's get that going so that you can read that part again. Does uh, audio just have that ready, though? I mean, we, we'll talk amongst ourselves until they do, but... Uh, <laughs> Are you the guys going to do you know. this with your siblings? We all have siblings here, yeah. right? Yeah, I guess. Maybe the, no. Probably. The funny thing is when, <laughs> when you... I, I love my siblings and we get along great, but it's funny that the first few days you're having the blast and then you kind of revert back to when you're kids, the same kind of like competitiveness and things like that, which is fine. Uh, but it's just amazing how you think you've grown up, but it can be it can take you right back in a good way, in, mostly in a positive way, except for the competitive nature. My sister likes to oh, there's there's around, the but. crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at yeah, you my guys. sister's. This was in Abu Dhabi. My sister's a diplomat, so every four years she hops around a new place in the world, which is super cool because I get to go. You, yeah, yeah couch yeah. surf with her, and my brother lives in the city, so we do uh, brunches all the time. So oh, yeah, yeah, your I love brother, my, love my sibling. Your brother Pete, he's a good man. Yeah. My siblings did that too. They're, I mean, they're both older than me. They traveled so much. They were all over the world for work and for play. So I really, we really didn't hook up that much when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. oh, and we wow. couldn't be, we're, you know, we shared DNA, but that's it. We are so disparately different people. But right. isn't, isn't your brother in TV as well? He was, now he's retired and golfs and day trades. Oh, wow. Right. So, yeah. you, oh, wow. so <laughs> where are you guys in the hierarchy of the siblings? You, are you youngest or? My sister's two years older and my brother's seven years younger. You're so. the middle child. Baby. Now. Oh, that explains so much. Just kidding. Mm. Uh, Total baby <laughs> in the family. You're the baby? Yeah, yeah. so am I. Pooj, you're also the baby. I am also the baby. You met yeah. my sister. My sister and I are super close. We talk mm -hmm. every day for sometimes two, three hours. It's really, really awesome. not healthy. That's there she is. You don't... Uh, <laughs> oh she, my goodness. She would be it's... kind of upset that this is up right now because she's a high school teacher. So sometimes she'll get missed. Oh. She's like, is your sister on TV? She's got the smiles going. Yeah, and then she'll, she'll deny. She'll deny that uh, I'm her sister. But uh, it's not because she's not proud of me. It's just because she doesn't like the attention. Do, does she use the last name Honda? No. Oh, okay, no. so that kind of creates a little uh, yes, mystery. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I think for all the people who don't have an older sister or even a younger sister, I feel so bad for them because it is such a special relationship. I, I, don't, I don't know anything else. I don't know what it would mm. be like to have a brother. But I'm so happy I have a sister. She's you guys, amazing. You guys all have Pretty sisters. Nice. Yeah. 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 I, I do not have a sister. I, I always would have loved to have a younger sister. Uh, I have an older brother who's awesome. Who almost Worth. has the same name as you. Yes, my brother's name is, my parents not so creative. <laughs> uh, my brother's name is Gurjeet. Literally Gurjeet. two different letters in <laughs> our names. That's a longer story for another day in terms of the Sikh traditions and how we select names. I'll save that for another yeah. Tinker Chat. But uh, we're both massively fans. He's the one who got me That's into Andy. the Leafs. The heated debate that what you really want to talk about Toppings on pizza, is it okay to put pineapple on pizza? This is the debate that won't go to bed. Uh, British online newspaper, The Independent, reached out to pizza chefs across the U.S. to get their take on the much uh, talked about ingredients, or topping, if you will. One chef who uh, does not care for the tangy fruit on his pizza pie says that he's given, it to, given in to customer demands. Another veteran chef says pineapple is acceptable when thoughtfully applied. 
<laughs> Others are taking a firmer stance, like at Lombardi's in New York City, where pineapple, mm. uh-uh, no matter how much you beg, you can't get it on your well, pizza you pie. Know, open your mind, open your palate. Don't troll on the dole, son. <laughs> well, you should, you should really talk to Gurdip. He's very passionate about this. Yeah. We'll not do pineapple on the pizza. I, I have no problem with people who like pineapple on their pizza. You do you for your oh, pizza. Okay. I just do not want fruit on my pizza, and here is my reasoning. It's simple. It is a pizza. It is not a cake, so fruit does not belong on top of it for me. Wait a minute. Don't try to change my mind. It's do my pizza. Do you have tomatoes on it? Uh, it's, not oh. my, it's not my favorite topping. I'll yeah, eat a pizza actually, with tomatoes on it, but it it's not my egg. favorite topping. Okay, I will no. say this. I was in the same camp as you. I would never eat pe a pineapple on a pizza until I found this one pizza mm, by Maker. Mm. So, uh, you know, they have a couple oh, of yeah. locations. It's called Tropic Thunder. Listen to this and tell me you don't I ordered want this. it because you told me to. And? It was good. Chili See? infused pineapple, mm. pickled jalapenos, pickled red onion, mozzarella, parmesan, red chilies, and salsa verde. It is oh. to die for. So if yes. it is carefully applied, uh -huh. I do think it can be acceptable. Why does it just have to be carefully applied? If it makes it you happy, be how can it be so bad? Yeah. Um, there, there's something about the sweet and savory mm. that makes me extremely excited for a pineapple encrusted pizza. Not just that, mm. but a Hawaiian calzone. You put oh, that thing yeah. in the explosion yeah, totally. of savory and mm -hmm. sweet is just like, and it doesn't have to be a dessert. People put pineapple on ham. Yeah, okay. right? prosciutto and melon. Yeah. 100%. Great combo. You, you know how the oh. best alcoholic drinks are the ones where you don't really taste the booze, you taste all the other great stuff? <laughs> yeah. uh, the reason why this pizza was delicious, Pooj, and I ordered it on your recommendation because you don't really like pineapple on pizza either, no. but you said to, you sold it to me as the jalapenos and the other stuff on it, you don't really taste the pineapple. Oh. It was good because I couldn't taste the pineapple. Because it was hidden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, see, I like pineapples with some olives and mushrooms. Oh, oh wow. Black and green olives, pineapples and mushrooms. We can never it's share pizza. So Those are like my... Good. Yeah, I no, like olives and pineapple notes. are like my two least favorite topics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But at least you're not like hating on those who choose it. No, but no, some you, of these restaurants you do won't you. even put it on yeah, the menu. They get pretty yeah. snobby yeah. about yeah. toppings. I actually did a quick Google search of like unusual toppings on your pizza. So pineapple is going to seem like nothing compared to these. So let's raise our hand if you would do it, okay? Peas on pizza. Yeah. Try it, but no. Totally. Fish. Nope. Well, All kinds of fish, too. Um, no, okay, fish. mashed potato. Nope. Huh. I'll try it. I'll try it. Chocolate. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Pizza, pizza, yeah. Pizza, yeah. Pizza, yeah. yeah. Sardines. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried. Yeah, yeah. No. No. Mackerel? Yes. No. Salty <laughs> Wait, you already asked fish. Salty fish. Up, yeah. uh, peanuts? Um, yeah, I'll do yes, peanuts I'll over fish. Yeah. I'm a texture Thai person, okay. so maybe not. Yeah, a little Bananas? crunchy. Bananas? No, yeah, no I'm fruit. Yeah, that's yeah, only yeah. a half fruit on the pizza. I don't know. Okay, bananas and chocolate? Squid ink? Yeah. No. And grapes? The grapes, just the huh. consistency, the I find fruit. weird, but, I, yeah, but why not? Texture is kind of weird. These actually exist as pizza toppings in, in some cake. countries. In any cake, it's yeah. a pie. <laughs> well, it's a pizza pie. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, you put fruit in pies. When it comes to dancing, you know, flossing has been hard for both of us. We haven't been able to figure that one out. But we've seen the Harlem Shake. There's dabbing. There's a mannequin challenge. Well, now a new dance craze is taking over the internet. Take a look. Do it. Do it. Twelve. Five. Four. Ah! What? <laughs> but, but like, but like, like, like. He did that. Where's the dance part? That's probably not the best example. Uh, it's a look at Hit the Woe Challenge. Here's how it works a dancer makes a quick, small, circular motion with their fists and then leans into a freeze position when the beat drops in a song. So. It, it just kind of looks like you're really just like your arms are kind of doing whatever. It looks like, like you're trying to correct some power steering that's out of control. Yeah, or it could be like a, a wax on, and then, wax but, off but situation. You, you freeze when the beat drops? Isn't that when you normally want to unfreeze? Well, it's like, you know, it's like the beat drops, boom. Right? Okay. I, I feel like this was uh, created for people uh, like us who floss, who found it too tough to floss. So, like, oh. let's create an easier dance move for right. you. So, here's the music. I don't know if we're going to get anything. Are we getting dropping, wrapped, or is this? This is just. <laughs> we can drop. Do I look as silly as you look? You probably <laughs> do it better than me because you got a fly jacket on. Do you have, what kind of face do you make when you do it? I'm dead serious. Me too. Do you freeze your face too? Yeah, oh, yeah. Does everything to. freeze? I feel like I'm kind of like karate chopping. Our producer Chris just said one minute in our year. I'm like, I can't keep doing this for a minute. <laughs> no. Um, you know what? Don't worry, because a lot of people are actually having fun with this. Uh, actually, here in our newsroom, go Lisa. Go around the horn. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that looks 
accurate. Is that you good? look a little confused, yeah. but yeah. yes. I think we're all confused. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. That, that seems <laughs> that seems more. You seem more sure there. Okay. Yeah. Lisa, got, can you get Minnie to do one for us? Oh sure. We got Minnie. Ready? Minnie's in the belly. Oh yeah. Oh, Minnie nailed it. Minnie's got rhythm. Does that he work? Or she all right. yeah. crushed it. Yeah. Do we have? Oh, we have Bill. Bill's doing it in the dark. <laughs> uh, Bill, I don't know. So awkward. Bill, Bill's doing the cha-cha. Yeah. <laughs> a cha-cha. It's more, cha -cha. Like, it's more cha -cha. like a steering wheel, Bill. Freeze. Freeze. Yeah. This music isn't helping. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, by the way, there's some other people who are having a lot of fun with this online, too. Take a look at this baby that can do it. Oh. Oh, that's a sneeze. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's actually hit the woe. Oh, OK. Hit the woe right there. OK. <laughs> uh, what about this cat? See what's going on here. Oh yeah, cat's doing it too. Is he though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if, okay. you, if the cat can do it and the baby can do it, mm -hmm. we can do it. I'm, I'm gonna ve venture a guess and say this one is not going to uh, obtain the virality of the Harlem Shake or be, have the pervasiveness of the I'm, Harlem Shake or the floss. I'm pretty sure that you're right about mm. this one. I don't see. Yeah. I think I need to like warn everybody before you watch this next story. If you're kind of squeamish when it comes to certain things, just like or if you're eating breakfast. If you're eating breakfast, this is not this is a story that it's not for everybody. But I needed to bring it to you. Okay. Should I look away too? Because I don't even know what this is. Maybe uh, it's straight out of a horror film. Okay? okay. Doctors in Taiwan they were shocked by what they discovered when they examined a woman experiencing pain and swelling in her eye. I don't like it already. Four. Tiny bees. Stop it. Were living under her eyelid. No. The bees were living off her tears as sweat bees. What? Oh, yes. Sweat bees is a thing. They are drawn to moisture and salt of human perspiration. The bees were extracted, and the woman is expected to make a full recovery, but she had bees living under her eyelids. Like living bees, not dead bees. No, Four living. Four bees that were alive. Four. Alive. Alive and how, how do you not feel that? I mean, or, or like, how do you, what? I know, and the pictures are just horrifying. So you know, if you're gonna Google this, just be. How is in there for even that. that much room in your eyelid for four bees? And how do you not know? Like you're like, oh, my eyes feel a little dry and irritated today. Let me go to the doctor. There are bees. There are bees in my eye. Like, you know, if you're gonna try to come up with a reason why you can't make it to work or why your dog ate your homework, instead. Bees in the eyes. I got bees in my face. I was sweating in my eyes, and the bees, they just, you know. What if you get stung in the in the eye? This is the whole thing. Do sweat bees sting? I don't know. You know when you, uh, actually, I don't know if you'll relate to this, but the fellas at home will relate to this. When you hear stories about people getting hit in uh, sensitive re areas, like if you, the other day you and I were talking about that, there's something about Mary and Ben Stiller, yeah. that scene. Yeah. It automatically makes a guy sort of like do this. Yeah. As you're reading the story, I, without the, I'm just like this. I'm like, my like, I have I wear contact lenses, and when a contact gets stuck sometimes, I'm like, oh, oh, my contact. Yeah. This is like a completely different People are different responding level. on social media, on Twitter. This woman posted this. Just, you know, just the thought of it. I think this is all of us right now.